you know, you could ignore the fact that all of those are all awesome looking skins for the street style skins that you can get now. But could you really ignore the dabbing chicken with the cool hat? Yeah, I don't know. That's the question you have to ask yourself. Can you afford to not have the dabbing chicken? Come Can down you with afford you? to not have the dabbing chicken? The Is the no. answer ever yes to that question? And I'd say no. You, you have always have to have, to have, have a chicken. If if you can afford to not have one, well, I, I mean, if I'm wrong on that, I, I don't want to be right. I mean, have you seen it? Have you seen the dabbing have chicken? Have you seen the dabbing chicken? I guess that's, that's, I will say, there's so many small nuances to those street style skins, but that is probably one of my favorites. Overall, is I think it's primarily Ash's skin that has the most of it, but that does come with the purchase of those. You will be able to get some of the accessories that have the dabbing chicken. But yeah. we're coming into another awesome matchup here for the console league today. It's going to be heating up and big money. And big money is one of those teams that as they got a lot time of money. has been going, they, well, They've no got idea. very big money. Whether or not sure. it's a lot, large. It's, it's like you know those giant checks. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. could be a giant check for a dollar. <laughs> for that a one dollar is where we're trying to debate. I don't know how much they have, but yeah. it's big money. And they've actually been doing pretty well lately. They, mm. I think, actually last two, last time these two went up, it was a three-one. They were able to take a map, and they have a few accomplished players on their name. Kev yeah. Falcon, we've talked about. We've talked about Galaxy, yeah. NBK, NBK, a lot of players who who have been around for a while. Yeah, and, and these players have the opportunity to show us that they're continuing to improve, that they're continuing to find success with each other. Not everybody's going to heat up the way Heating Up have and the way that other yeah. teams have in this earlier part of, of, of the iteration of the, the PCL. But as these weeks go and, and they continue to have opportunities, you do expect to see some things. So I'd be excited to see them play today. And I'm excited because Galaxy has been one of those players that I would put a, up there with Atomic AMK in my mind where it's just bringing fresh blasters to the scene that might not have been played before yeah very big on bomb king i remember making a lot of serious plays but they're going to end up having to go against heating up which is probably one of the i mean at this point just one of the more difficult matchups you could have in this region yeah admittedly big money low-key scheming i think are the two kind of on par unfortunately i believe big money money is fourth place right now and when it comes down to one of the players you're gonna have to beat down in order to take them down is gonna be calamity who first week did not play on this team but since he has been here has been making huge strides Obviously, it all, you know, when SJP was uh, banned, and I mean, it changed a lot of the dynamic for this roster, but they still have a ton of other players that have done it, have been successful, um, and they put themselves in a great position all the way up until those earlier weeks of, of really getting big wins. It's going to be an interesting one. I'm expecting heating up to uh, take this one pretty handily, but I hope big money show up on some on some big champion choices. I want to see some, some flair, some flexibility, some... some you know, some spice. Well, Make it they, caliente. Uh, on the side of heating up, have some uh, some members that are standing kind of first in uh, like their records, I guess, overall. Like Woosh okay. has the number one objective time <laughs> in the wow. console league. Like Woosh lives on the point, and I guess that's where it's going to come down. And Soldierbot, <laughs> I believe, is leading in kills right now. So like a lot of these players are doing notable things right. across the entire. I, I'm not sure if it's just this region or if it's everywhere, but I mean, being able to accomplish that, it's very big for them. He should definitely charge property tax on anyone who tries to, <laughs> who tries on to get point. on the points. Like, no, yeah, no, 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 charge, yeah, maybe he rents it out. Like Airbnb is the objective. <laughs> uh, if somebody so, else is uh, to stand I'll let on you it, get yeah. this point, uh, but it's going to be, it's going to run you $3. It's going to it's, it's cost your support and it's going to cost your DPS if you want to uh, stay here. Is that cool with you? A lot of people uh pay that price whether they say there or not so they say okay at least i'll at least i'll enjoy my time while i can if it's all gonna end the same way i'll at least stay on the point. you have someone on big money going like please get those guys off my back i, know. I just want to relax <laughs> i'm on vacation here we're going over to bright march though and time. that's going to be the thing of the day i think we have the same well actually not the same four bands we are used to leon gonna put her face on the list yeah. But Genos is going to be the first pick for heating up, and he's been kind of the topic of conversation these last few weeks. Genos is a great pick, and he brings so much to the roster, and, and that's what's fun about him. He makes other players good, and that's what you love when you see a, a player. One of my favorite types of players are those players that facilitate, that make Where those great passes, and, and obviously allow other teammates to be better because they're on the floor. You look at basketball, LeBron James-style player. You look at soccer, football. You look at yeah, Messi, Xavi, and Iniesta. You look at Paladins, you, you look at Genos because he's yeah. great, but he, he facilitates Kogas. 
and Imani's Blades being even better done. than they already are. So it's a, it's an awesome addition to any roster. And honestly, heating up have probably gone the I only route that would life. make me say, well, even though Big Money have Khan lead. and yeah. Atlas and uh -huh. Saris and Victor, which Time are all going to be very Bob. phenomenal picks for console, they still have a really good draft on the side of heating up that they still do. looks really good in terms of point control and specifically Bright Marsh. Yeah, I, I think we've seen how well Barrett can contend even against the Nanara, and especially against the Saris pairing of a front line, because if you can get the early credit advantage, you start to really bank into what they're counting on to hold up that point, which is yeah. my ability to outlast Cauterize. When Cauterize happens that fast, there's no way of outlasting it. And also, good luck outlasting uh, a Koga, maybe running Adrenaline Junkie, and an Imani hitting with Splitting Ice with yeah. a Luminary Bust. It's going to uh, be boost. a lot of damage on the side of heating up. Drogo's was the last pick, though, for Big Money Esports, but the only way to find out who's going to have the better draft is to go down to the casters and have them take us through Bright Marsh. Thank you, boys. Looking forward to our third set of the day. Another Luminary Koga coming out today. How do you feel about it? We haven't seen Koga really, you know, in a long time since the claws yeah. went away. Adrenaline Junkie starting to come back through a little bit. Definitely. Is Luminary Koga enough to make this easy for heating up? I love it. I mean, I love flanks personally, and I love what they bring to the meta, which is getting in your face, yeah. making you miss shots, making you, you know, introducing more human error into the game. I think always makes things interesting and keeps it fresh not a lot of people are doing it right now so i love it from heating up and i think they're beyond the heating up point at this point i think they are full blown on fire as a team of course this is the region where onslaught also very close in that first place conversation so they'll need to have a good performance here today of course week 12 is when heating up and onslaught face off likely deciding yeah the person who goes through to MSI, so heating up a look for a 3-0 here today to really solidify themselves. Can't really be afford to be dropping maps definitely uh, at this point with how close things are. Richie, Soldier Bot, the two DPSers on the heating up side will look to push them through to the victory here today. Drogos, though, on Bright Marsh, I mean, that often is, is enough to, to throw the other team through a loop. Yeah, we saw this earlier today in an environment where there was no hit scan, only Genos, but there was... Imani Barrick, fast, fast projectiles can still deal with Drogos if they're on point. They will certainly need to be. So we've got the Imani, we've got the Barrick check. Ash can and keep so him in combat, put a little poke on there. Depending on how consistent you are with your shots, can come back to haunt that Drogos. Genos can be a big part of it as well. But Soldier Bot is certainly going to be the guy you're watching to try and see how quickly he can tear apart this team. God, and he did just that. I mean, they Onslaught sniff out the rotation here from Big Money and just plant. Uh, the barrack on the point just to start bringing things up. They're taking so much damage. They're going to end up fighting back into this point. They're finally getting some healing through, but they were about half health just a moment ago, just tearing through the health bars right now. That's what's so uh, scary. Arakoga, and then, then they're going into these fights with low health bars. So low is the con. Richie finally getting some healing as well. 54% already, though, for Onslaught. No kills have come through just as of yet. Look at that damage. Kev Falcon has just been eating damage from the Onslaught boys to start things off. Bomb goes out. Bomb will miss again. Close to picking up Soldier Bot there. Double Dash is going to get him nice and healthy here at about 1,000 HP. 63% to 42. First Blood finally, finally falls in almost two minutes. That's a two-minute First Blood, and that could be enough to open the doors here for Big Money. I mean, where the point is at, 63%. Both teams only needing 20 and some change to get this one pushed through. Soldier Bot's able to answer back the onto turret. Kev Falcon. Oh. That's really big. The turret <laughs> nearly finishing off NBK here, but he's going to get himself nice enough high. I don't think they knew that he was up there. The salvo into the flame spit's going to be good, but the damage that comes back to him is going to be bad onslaught. Looking poised to take point number one here. NACL, Mr. Salt goes back to base. Calamity cleans that one up. An onslaught fine. Point number one on Bright Marsh. And that was a very drawn out point it fight. Was. Not the th quite the three, four minute one we saw in our last set, but things change when ultimates start to come online here. So we'll have to see how Onslaught are able to transition, survive. I have to say, looking at big money esports, they have some very difficult ultimates to deal with. If overpowers and dragon punches are connecting. That's, uh, that's two free kills for them. On the other side, Onslaught really need to leverage this dragon. Cyclone Strike. Yep. Not guaranteed to get you what you want. Assert Dominance can be good. Time and space. Hit or miss. Dome Shield's still pretty good, but the big concern for me is that Big Money Esports have snap ultimates. Like, I'm going to come out. I am yep. going to get somebody with the overpower. 
which is going to make it much easier for somebody to be killed by Dragon Punch, things like that. It's a much easier to execute team fight for big money. They threw the Barrage out and got some poke and really just forced Onslaught back, didn't get any kills. Um, that's all they were looking to do, I think, just buy a little bit of space for themselves, because Onslaught, they were rounding that first corner very quickly, and they needed uh, to be checked at the moment. Uh, one kill came through for big money. It was NBK on this Drogos, taking out the Ash on the opposite side. Calamity, though, he answers back onto Galaxy. That's going to be most of the damage now for big money that's out of this fight as his payload starts to move forward. NBK is playing this Drogos very, very well, using uh, the Worm Jets to keep himself up alive and out of range. 60 seconds left, though, and this payload is starting to round this final corner, Nick. Yeah, it certainly is. And the scary thing about this Koga is that it, it is to a lesser degree than like Torvald Claw Koga was, but it can be something that just runs away with a team fight. Yep. If it starts to get rolling, it is a build that sustains itself very well through this energy replenishing yeah, mechanic. You're getting your ammo back, you're getting HP back. So if it starts to roll and there's not enough DPS out on the field to shut it down to an extent, then you get in trouble. That's a big nod to Galaxy on the opposite side, damage-wise, keeping up with that of Soldier Bot on the Koga. Five ultimate strong for big money here, 20 seconds left, almost five for Onslaught. Barrage comes out, doesn't find any targets, gets a little chunk damage onto the Barrack, uh, but that's not going to be enough to really dispel a team fight from starting out here. A couple bunched up Ooh. targets is going to be good for Soldier Bot. He's going to find the damage potentially going down now is Kev Falcon, but not just as of yet. Assert Dominance comes down as well, but it's Imani who's bringing the damage to this one. A double kill for the Dragon Queen, and this payload is looking like it's going to roll through. Dragon, and now Exile actually comes out as well to try and slow some of this down. A <laughs> very, very on the nicely <laughs> job. It's a great job by Atlas. What yeah. an effort. Does a lot to control, corral, set back, rewind, all this, all this time control. 14 million outcomes, and we didn't win a single one. That's tough. <laughs> We saw them all. They all ended with a 2-0. I'm not sure that payload could have been any further on the point uh, without it actually being in there. So a little nod to Kev Falcon for keeping that one alive as long as it was. But the five streaking members of Onslaught is going to be tough to break through. A couple wreckers, a couple caught twos. Wreckers on four out of the five actually will be good uh, for the shields that they're bringing on big money side. And they didn't use too much, Nick, to get that through. Only the Assert Dominance was used, whereas yeah. Exile, Barrage, and Convergence all used for big money. So Onslaught, just on an ultimate basis, are at a bit of an advantage going into uh, the second point fight. And big money, only hitting, or still hitting the Cauterize 2 mark, I should say. So they're not going to be too far behind in terms of their items, which is a big, big thing. It's very important to pay attention to that. Power Spikes are closer to hitting the Cauterize 3 stride if you're looking at the side of Onslaught. So if they grab this payload, they are absolutely going to have enough credits to grab all those. And talking about running away with team fights, yep. Soldier Bot has found his window of opportunity and has capitalized. Yeah, if there's one guy you don't want to run away and, and start to nice. heat up for heating up, it is Soldier Bot. The Cyclone Strike is going to confirm the fourth kill of that engagement. And in the meantime, they were just chilling out on the point. The one-man rundown from Soldier Bot confirms point number three. That's really what you need for Onslaught. I mean, you want it in a more traditional sense in the last one. Yeah. Uh, but Soldier Bot really puts this one on his back and gets the payload moving for the potential 4-0. No Dragon, no Dome Shield, no time and space, and a Cyclone Strike at the very tail end for the final kill on the con. That is just a pure mechanical one-man wrecking crew on the side of Soldier Bot. So nice performance from him. That's exactly the type of situation we were trying to to warn you about in the chat. Inferno Cannon comes out. Richie will lose his life. It's kind of a last-ditch last ditch effort type of ability anyway. I was going to say, that's a new sentence. Inferno Cannon comes out. I don't, think that, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that one's been said before. Galaxy with a couple. He's had a pretty good game up to this point. Uh, let's take a quick look at the damage going into maybe this final push here. Yeah, three top members for blue. Galaxy had kept up. He still is keeping up, only... Uh, six and some change behind the leaders. He was he was right up there, uh, but having a tough game so far. But Koga Amani Barrick, that's a strong top three to have to compete with, especially when you have the luminary buff on the side of Onslaught as well. Big bomb. Could find one. Does end up finding the Saris, but there's no follow up just as of yet. About a minute and ten seconds left. Here's the dragon. It's in a safe spot. They're not going to be able to get back to it. Just burning away. Oh. Dragon on dragon action. Did That's he, hot. Did he dragon punch the dragon? I actually don't know what it's about. Yeah, I guess he did I think they, they melted the away at it. So 
Looks like Drogon came out on top of this one. Unfortunately, gets sent back to base by Soldier Bot. Jeff the Raccoon as well, just burning away at the health bars. It is Onslaught, and it looks Nick like this is going to be a 4 0. Yeah, not a great opportunity. Koga right up on top. And a little stage in the back of Bright Marsh. Onslaught will claim that victory. Always with the ever present threat of the Cobra ripping apart a team fight, and he does manage to grab that there. Dragon Punch forced to, instead of take out a tank, take out a dragon. Not the worst decision for it, but <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. That was a pretty funny interaction. I don't think we've seen oh. a true dragon fight, at least since episode three, but coming out here uh, <laughs> in the console league. Heating up, though, they look really good. That's a 4 0. That's the best you can hope for um, in game number one, especially against Big Money, a team that. Yeah. Not necessarily has really given them a run for their, well, money in the past, but a team that's shown a propensity to maybe take a map or two, maybe take some points off of you in the past. Uh, but heating up, they start off the day on a really good foot. They have a lot to fight for today, like they you do. mentioned, coming in. A very, very close contest here in this region. So getting a clean 3-0 here and just getting on with your day is what they're looking to do. And that's exactly the way it starts here in map number one. Let's send it back to Gore and Evan to break it down. Well, it's about what you would want if you wanted to see Heating Up be successful. Come in, find themselves a 4-0, and, well, they look good doing it. They certainly do. And, you know, it's hard to take away from a team going up against someone of that caliber who's playing yeah. that well. But, you know, you do want to see continued efforts and, and adjustments and, and trying to at least find the the chink in the armor, right? Yeah. That's the whole goal for the night. You may not win against the, the big boss and the, the start of your journey as an adventurer, but you got to try. And I think that's what they're doing. They have a decent lineup for it as well. And I actually like the way that they they go for these very big, aggressive frontline tanks, which is actually very PPL-esque, where we've seen the ability for NIP to take Bonker and... and, and uh, Diggy Duck. Oh well, yeah, I guess it is Diggy. It's so weird still thinking of him as a tank. <laughs> and put them both on aggro tanks instead of yeah. having the traditional aggro and then the point tank. So I, I love what Soldier Bot is able to do with this Koga as well. I think uh, seeing more and more of him is something I will not get tired of. And uh, it, it's it's a great way they expose this lineup. I think the honest transition I expect to see big money or somebody start taking if they don't want to deal with well this mm -hmm. is probably transitioning into banning out of Genos. I think that's enabling a lot of what's going yeah. forward. Very similar to how we always talk about Torvald enabling things. Yep. Genos, especially on console, is going to allow these flanks to kind of skyrocket. But that's a 4-0 for Bright Marsh. Then we go to Jag Falls. And admittedly, a lot of the things that work on Bright Marsh can work here. Yeah. Different layout yeah. overall. But there are certain fights that I think if you're going to take them, you're more than likely around the point fight. I mean, it's kind of a closed off space. You have a little bit longer line of sight overall onto the point. Mm -hmm. With the side rooms, it kind of makes things a little bit more of an interesting dynamic. Yeah, well, we'll see as well because, I mean, Koga, like you mentioned, can work really nicely here. And it also can work really well for big money esports if they want to try their hand at that, maybe first pick at Genos. What we've seen is heating up. They got it. It worked. Mm. Will they ban it out here? And they're not. So Big Money Esports will have their hand at the Koga. And that just gives them a whole slew of options to be able to at least set their draft up so that they can kind of counter pick towards the back I two and maybe put heating up on the back end. Now I'm wondering, and you can tell me how you think about this. So earlier today, when we were casting the Flashpoint set, yeah. they let the Talus through knowing that Genos would be picked under Talus. Mm. And then they handled it. And that was like mm. the way they were just like, you know what? You can have it. Mm -hmm. We're just going to control it. Do you right. think that would have been a better response for heating up? Or do you banners. think they're happy here Run. with just an Amani Khan? I think they're happy with Amani Khan because heating up are a very confident, Plus flexible team. Yeah. Part of that is with Soldier Bot because what he does is he has a propensity to play flanks and a lot of flanks. But then he'll also play a Genos with, uh, you know, Binary Star. And sure. what that means <laughs> is that their roster is me. very hard to predict. Obviously, the Genos now for big money esports, so you have that. Pray but there's a God. lot of flanks on the table, and they're the last picking for him. Cannot. This means that he's going to be able to, to flex oh, yeah. onto something. And, and, and I'm not sure what it's going to be. That's you kind of what is Makoa? the interesting part about heating up. But they leave open the Makoa. Give your king a big this is a strong lineup from Big Money Esports. Oh, yes. it, it, it leans very heavily from a statistical standpoint into those champions over there. This is, on paper, coming. for me, probably one of the best Jagfalls 
lineups you could have. Like, yeah. I mean, this is just so just comfortable. About. Bomb King's really good here. Makoa, Barrick, Leon, Genes. Like, it's very solid. So much to see how Heating Up are going to deal with this. They have the Imani, the Victor. Do you think Heating Up, like, I'm is this a lie. mechanical thing that it's just they are probably going to play stronger? Big Money Esports, sh I mean. On paper. On should paper. Win. Should probably win this game. Well, that's it. On paper, everything's going in your favor, and I think both of us agree. On paper, it's the better draft, so it's going to come down to mechanics. This is a good chance for you to show off what you have. Otherwise, heating up are going to well, heat you up in the microwave and cook you for, for lunch. this. And now we're going to go down to the casters and have them take us through. You know, Nick, that's the thing about paper, though, is heating up. Fire beats paper, regardless of what you have written on that paper. Indeed. The fire is going to burn it up. That's what Heating Up will look to do. Of course, I, I would agree with what the death said, though, in that Makoa, Genos, Barrick, Bomb King, Leon looks like a superior lineup in this case. But what we've seen in this league throughout the season is just that the superior team who is playing better Paladins at the moment can overcome some of those differences. And uh, I think Heating Up will, will have a good chance of doing that. Certainly, certainly. They do have, uh, I think, Amani Khan... They did. They've got good stuff going for them, for sure, but Big Money Esports, pretty much top to bottom, feel like they are strong. Fernando can fall behind in a couple of aspects. Maldamba as well is not the premier healer on console, but if you can uh, if you can execute on it, certainly has the ability to compete. I want to see if this Bomb King stuck with Chain Reaction, though. That's something that he picked early in the spawn, and it looks like he did. Galaxy sticks with it. No royal subjects here. The more simple easy to operate talent and he will pick up two quick kills with yeah. the supplemented damage that's the that's the potential of bomb king on this map the entire roster but bomb king specifically he fights really well in these sort of closed off up in your face environments and is a benefactor of that with a nice double kill to start off jaguar falls here 60 percent for big money and nbk continues to pressure up into the face of heating up they can't even break out of their base and this looks like big money are at least poised to maybe get this one set off. There are a couple, though, from the heating upside that are in range, ready ready to contest, and the respawns are starting to come out as well. Yeah, Bomb King's got a great angle on Khan. Kev Falcon's going to come by and help take him down. 99 to nothing, heating up. A tough spot here. That's a three-man presence. Oh, convicts yeah. in a big way in the back line. Jeff the Raccoon manages to bring one back, but... Again, this overtime starting to try and expire in favor of big money. Yeah, but where's the damage on the opposite side? There it is. Woosh gets cleaned up, and now the rest of them are in range. Uh -oh. Heating up could potentially retake this point here. Soldier Bot going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Makoa, and it looks like he's going to get the better of that one. Kev Falcon goes out. The Barrage came out thinking there were maybe some targets left. There was nothing for him to shoot there, but 60% of his cooldown gets refunded, so not the end of the world. Yeah. Look at this. 99% for big money, 72 for heating up. That was a last-minute clutch play that needed to come out in their favor, and it did. And now it just depends on how good the zone is. 96%, 99. I don't think they're in range to touch. They're wow. not. They get a kill. But on 99%, they lose the team fight and heating up. They're able to hold off for point number one. Tough stuff there. Completely swept off the battlefield. No chance for a disengage. Left heating up very in control of the point. And a little bit of zoning coming out as well. That was tough to watch there, but... If it wasn't for that early 30 or so percent grab by Woosh, I don't think that would have been possible there. So shout out to the frontline play, setting up the potential for a comeback. Now Calamity, very, very deep in the back line. Woosh is going to get involved as well as they continue to dominate and to roll forward. Heating up, remember, yeah. they are looking for the 3-0 today, so they need to maintain control of this set. They started off great, up 1-0 in this set. Now the... The, the push, the, the full court press, as we like to say, is in full effect here. Big money all the way back in their base. Can't even get out of spawn through time and space. Goes a little bit wide here in Calamity. He's zoning out three members. Richie helps as well with a kill of his own. That's two down now. Five on three for what could be the final point fight, or team fight, I should say, of this final half. So many low health bars for Blue right now. The grenade could seal it, but he's not going to need it. Richie's going to be the one to do it. And heating up 2-0 here. Didn't use too much. The Barrage, 50% back on that cooldown. That'll charge pretty quickly. Overpower will come back soon as well. Through time and space was just a bit of a, a last resort. Maybe catches a couple and gives them some space, but still four ultimates for big money here. And heating up, they, they really flipped it around. They, they lost the early game, but ever since winning that crucial overtime fight, mm -hmm. have really been on the front foot here. That's what a good team does. They're able to make sure when they do get an advantage, they hold on to it for as long as possible and continue to translate 
you know, team fight wins, mm -hmm. skirmish wins into momentum, into zone control, into map control. Things of the like here, heating up with a good couple of ultimates available and big item advantage. So we talked about having Cauterize 2 online regardless of losing the first round 2-0 on Bright Marsh. That's not the case here for everyone. Big Money Esports are missing some Tier 2 offensive items. And that's going to give Heating Up the initial advantage coming into this, but much the same as what we saw last time. Heating Up going with a bit of a roundabout flank. Big Money have sniffed it out, though. They're staring down so much damage from that overpass here. It's going to be Woosh, who's really trying to hold down that front line, but Soldier Bot, he's going to come huge with some damage here. NBK, that's exactly the target you want to clean up if you're on the side of Heating Up. And now they can just run down the rest of the members knowing that the rest of the damage is back. That's a big, big wow. ultimate there. And Heating Up just run down the members of Big Money. And they're back on the point. The potential to go up 3-0. Very, very nicely done by Woosh. I have to say, he set that up beautifully. Baited everyone in. They thought they were going to be able to snag that kill, but a nice immortal keeps him alive. Woosh is playing very, very well right now. Of course, you have to shout out the three-man fear as well to put the cherry on top of very You need that follow-through. You need that follow-up. Follow a nice setup from Woosh, and the follow-through is there for Maldamba, and it makes it just too easy for Soldier Bot at that point. He does his job, but I don't think he's to... He really no. a lot of credit is to go his way for that fight. No, just in general, heating up look a lot cleaner than they did map number one. Of course, still winning handily map number one. Uh, but ever since losing the early game here, not even losing an entire point, but they kind of sniffed out some things that they saw, changed things around for the better. Now five streaking members looking to make this a 4-0. Two minutes left on the clock. Payload approaching this first underpass here. Here's the King Bomb. Who's he looking for, though? He's going to find a stun onto Woosh, but the Ancient Rage Kev Falcon is going to be the one to get the kill. Izzy Mitchell as well gets one for himself, and the rest of Heating Up are just going to back off, look to reset. And I think that's good on their side because big money, they, they used most of everything, whether it was at the end of the first or the second point fight, I should say, or this initial defense. Ancient Rage is down. King Bomb down. Enlightenment, Dome Shield, they'll come back soon, but both down. Heating up don't have much more utility on their side. Closer to the overpower. Here's the barrage that could open up a little bit of space. That does chunk out a couple members of big money, but the damage instead comes back from the Leon. That's going to be a nice return kill, one they needed to get big money esports. Spend alts just to get a foothold in this round, but as quick as it came, it went. I'm Calamity finds yep. Kevin Falcon over here on the right-hand side. Those health bars. That's a lot of chain reaction damage, though. Galaxy manages to keep his team in it. Back and forth go the trades. Woosh finds another one on the backside. Low HP bars. This Fernando might be able to clean this. The Genos healing just isn't quite enough for big money. Finally on, topped man. off, but there's the overpower off the map. Goes the Makoa. That could be all the space that Heating Up need to push this one through and make it a 4-0. They have a 5 versus 4 right now to maybe get this one in. And look, they can't pass by Woosh. I'm Calamity and Woosh both leading the charge here. The Dread Serpent's going to seal it and heating up. That's about as clean of a 4-0 as you can get. Dragons, Fears, too much left in the tank, certainly, for heating yep. up. They started that campaign in a nice way. And I, I have to say, I was, I was really impressed with the way that they stayed in it. A lot yeah. of times, Teams like will lose somebody that will give up a pick and say, that's it, that's over. But it, the fight's not really over until you give up map control that you've gained elsewhere in that fight and give up and start to try and disengage. But Woosh keeps his head down, stays in. I think Woosh played really, really nice in that he game, did. and he's who I'd get my MVP to. That front, that front line presence definitely a big factor in this one. Heating up, go up 2-0 to zero here in this set. Let's send it back to the desk and set up game number three. Honestly, you'd watch maybe the first 20, 30 seconds of that game, and it looks, man, okay, yeah, big okay. money, you're going to be yeah. able to run this. Yeah. And I, I legitimately looked down for a second. When I looked up, I was like, how did, what, what did I miss for heating up to take this point? Then, you know, you blink, it's a 2-0, you blink, it's a 3-0, then we're back here already. Dude, it's, it's one of those where you, you do see that the efficacy of a team and, and the ability for these players to play the game will always be more important than the draft. You can always beat a great draft uh, if you have five coordinated players. In a casual game, you know, left side, big money, they, they would have won. You know, they would have been able to put that together, but uh, it, it's not enough uh, yeah. against this type of squad. And uh, what, what really turned the tide for me was so many of the Amani setup plays and so much of, of how this dragon can zone on Jaguar Falls and how many little cubbies she can hide in. And, and get value. And I think it's important to note, like Leon was, I believe, top damage in the game. Like NBK mm -hmm. was putting out large numbers, mm -hmm. but it is, you know, I guess that story that we always have every so often where it's just, 
how much does that matter if you can't convert it to a kill, right? Like, right. that's where the, the conversion comes from. Theoretically, right. enough poke will force them out far enough that it kind of feels like a kill, but yeah. with the way supports work, and specifically even with, you know, what, especially with what they were running on heating up, yeah. you just, okay, I'm going to take two steps out of the fight, cool, I'm back in the fight. Like, you're not yeah. out for good versus what heating up were doing, which was just, I'm going to end you, and then we have all the room in the world. I mean, when you really look at it, that's what Cassie can sometimes bring much better than, than Leon, and, and how Leon in Eminence is a du dual potential sword that can cut you, but also cut the enemy team. Because when you hit Eminence, it's so deadly. If you don't, hitting for 400, maybe a 600 headshot, Cassie hits for 650 at base every time. You know what you're getting. She's so good at securing kills, and she's got a blast shot as well in case that 650 isn't enough. She could print close to 1,000. Yeah. And one more bolt. I mean, she's putting out, essentially in two shots, about 1,800 damage and, uh, you know, 1,400 damage or so. And, and Leon's around 800, and that sometimes makes the difference. And you have to, you know, it's 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 harder to, to, to say, but I think closing out a kill is why I like seeing consistent DPS champions with people like Bomb King, with people like, you know, a Droke, somebody who can out of set them up and then somebody who could finish them. Well, I do like big money. Again, the thing I think to, to look at for me in mm. matchups Wait, like this is, is if you can't get a win or if you can't do something that is going to make you seem, yeah, I want to say, in charge of the other team, yeah, do small changes throughout all of this. Last game, yeah. they said, it's you know like what? We didn't team, get Genos. Let's see if Genos equalizes this a little bit. Right. And then this game, they're saying, you know what? Genos didn't, didn't do enough for charge. us, but we know it does a lot for them. Let's ban that, and then we open up something strong for us. They grab the con. I, I love those kinds of adjustments. Of I mean, it, it, it's a great way to see what's working for you and see what's working for them and try to find the, the keystone, the, the, the crux uh, of My what is truly friend. the issue with this matchup for you, because everything Dang. has to be examined. Not that Heating Up or Isolated, just a great team. Their stats in the world exist by the themselves. You're now looking at wh what's going wrong. Am I dying? Is, is MBK dying too much to Richie? Yeah. Is that happening? If so, why? What matchups are we getting That's consistently? How do we start to sh swivel maybe just one of those matchups in our favor? Well, I'm excited for one matchup and one matchup out of this, and that is Grok versus Ying and Nara. I just think it's going to be really fun. A lot of things to bounce that shock pulse off of. Watkins inspired a whole generation. Watkins inspired. <laughs> Dude, I mean, he's brought it down. He has All, the best Grok play, You watch, what is it, the first three weeks of the minor league, and Watkins <laughs> has showcased the meta that we transitioned into Watkins in just those was three the weeks. Lead. And so Watkins, once again, has set precedent <laughs> that is coming through. Grok, I'm excited for. Let's see what Dave and Nick are excited for. What are you excited for, Nick? Same thing? Down for Grok. You're <laughs> down for a little Grok. Of course, Watkins defining the meta that we're playing in. Uh, according to the boys on the desk, game three about to get underway, heating up, looking to win this one, make it a clean 3-0, help out their plus minus a little bit. And if they play the same here on Frog Isle, well, it's probably going to go their way. Do you think Grok's enough of a difference maker? I mean, you have Ying clones, you have uh, some Inara things to bounce that shock pulse off of. Is yeah. that enough <laughs> to turn the tide in this one? Maybe. If he even goes that way, because right now he's That's got true. Temic Ward, I think. Selected. Yeah, you're right. Extra HPS on the totem. And, of course, that CC immunity, which can be so, so beneficial to you. But if I'm looking at the side of heating up, I'm not really seeing a lot of... There it is. The switch back to Maelstrom. Like, there really isn't much CC that you're worried about. We've seen, like, when Makoa was, was getting... Or you could let Makoa through and then just pick up Totemic Ward, and he the couldn't hook anyone, and you would just have a build dedicated to as much Totem uptime and tankiness as possible. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something that you, you, you kind of... It's easy to sleep on when you don't know how to play against a big, big pod of CC immune targets, getting a, you know, Ying ultimate levels of healing through all at the same time. But if people get in his face, this Grok is not going to be able to do what he wants to do. And that's the lineup, unfortunately, heating up half with with uh, Atlas and, and Koga and Nara. I mean, that's a get-in-your-face lineup if I've ever seen one. They do just that. Kev Falcon is going to be the recipient of the first death in this game. 72% already for heating up. Just one kill to their name. But look at this. As we said, up in your face, just a couple men are zoning out the rest of big money. 96%. I don't think they're going to be able to get a touch. They're not, able, they're not, excuse me, able to break through that front line, heating up, playing very well with just one kill in their belt. Yeah, especially 
Shoutouts to Calamity. I don't think playing aggro Atlas is as easy as maybe some people get it, give it credit for. He is very strong, but not a lot of people have been able to play him in a very aggressive manner and and find themselves yeah. succeeding. So that was that's tough. It's tough to run into a into a Grok Khan that's you know locking you down and trying to get in your face, out racing you. Khan, especially on console, great tracking ability there. The, the Chrono Cannon is very unique, not necessarily lending itself as to either a tracking or a necessarily flick type of weapon. It's definitely one that uh -oh. you have to get used to in your own pace. That's a good barrage there. Ultimate starting to fly out for both sides, but all the kills are coming up for heating up right now. That's a one, two, three, about as fast as they lined him up. They knocked him down. Calamity playing the aggro Atlas, getting deep into the lineup of big money. There wasn't really anyone left for him to kill anyway. Most of the damage was front-loaded in that one. Heating up around this final corner. The Exile Cyclone Strike still ready with a minute left. Uh, only the Immortal, some quicker charging ultimates for big money though, so they'll have something to defend with if this one goes the full one minute. The Exile though could change the tide here. Oh, that's a good rewind, setting up some kills on a silver platter is the damage there though. Not just yet, but there's a Cyclone Strike as well. The Immortal saves the life of Fernando, at least at the moment. Galaxy's going to be the first one to die off in this fight. And if it keeps going this way, oh, man. I was going to say, they're not even going to be able to get a touch, and they don't. They find one kill, some good Exiles heating up, push it in, too, though. And before Resilience, I mean, that's a four-second banish. You can do what we just saw there and chain banish a single target. <laughs> Poor guy. For a total of eight seconds of just, oh, okay. You don't get to play the game. Hands off the wheel for eight full seconds. Payload just kind of rolls on in. It's nobody's fault necessarily. It's no. just a nice play. Again, Calamity yep. playing a very, very good, aggressive Atlas player. Whoosh. I thought was MVP of game number one. Calamity setting himself up in the first round to be MVP of game number two. I don't know how you could be MVP when you have the most deaths on your Five, team, then, Nick. Big four, feeder. Three, two, <laughs> the one. He's out of time. He is give out him, of time. Give he him is, a break. That's true. You're right. He is the man out of time. He has the one death for heating up right now, though. Big money. Looking to turn things around in this side, but they found one kill heating up. I mean, there, there's not too much you can turn around when it's really just a big zone. You, you can't really drop your shoulder and push through it. Some early chunk damage onto the boys of big money right oh, now. No. Richie cleans up that kill. The Tempest is going to help out. Big money, give them a little bit of movement speed right now. The dragon burns away at Soldier Bot, but the damage is coming right back around on it. The healing, good for big money as well. That kept them in that fight, but still it's heating up with 36% on the point. Now I was able to survive that nicely. Remember, offensive items, again, not on the line for big money esports. They were only able to get their starting good. items still. Big stun there to get the shield out of the way, out of my face. Overpower doesn't connect either. That's a big That's missed tough. ultimate. Richie finds two. Nice setback onto two more. Love what I'm seeing from this Atlas. Yeah, now it's Kev Falcon and NBK who are trying to keep this one alive, but with 84% on the point and the damage all red. This one's going to be 3-0. If this is anything like the first push they had, this one could be over sub. I don't know, seven minutes if this one ends up going through in this allotted time frame here. Woosh continuing the aggression as well. The Atlas playing aggressive, the Inara playing aggressive. There's just so much in your face if you're playing on the big money side right now and the damage as well. They're free to just hang back and find it. Barrage is ready if he wants to use it. Some clumped up targets could be all he needs, Jeez. but he's not going to need it. Inara's going to wrap that one off. That's a good setback with no health for Kev Falcon. This payload's moving forward, Nick. There's not a lot of time left. Yeah, not a lot that uh, Big Money can do to stop this one at this point. Soldier Bot continues his reign of terror in the back line with Koga, but he's got so much supplementary aggression with his front lines yep. being up there shoulder to shoulder with him in the trenches. This is really the strength of heating up is their ability to play together, and you just you know what they're trying to do. Everybody is clearly on the same page on this Frog Isle game. This is exactly what they need to keep their foothold in first place. Good Exile saves his life. There's a second chance as well. He's going to top off his health bar. The last minute ultimates for big money starting to fly. Convergence finds a couple. But yet again, they're not even in a position to contend. I think there was maybe one kill in that final team fight. That's about as clean of a game, yeah. even, even death-wise. I think there's probably single-digit kills across the board for heating up. That's a 4-0. That's a 3-0 on the day for the boys. Exile's one hell of an ultimate when you use it like that. I yeah. mean, Calamity pretty much single-handedly prevents any overtime fight. Overtime at least starts that round, but there wasn't much of a contest <laughs> no. afterward with Khan. Crowd controlled and then hits with the setback again, so Atlas can really lock somebody down if you play it nicely.
That's a 3-0 for heating up on their side. Big day here from them. Let's send it back to the desk to break this one down. Well, I don't know if we can break it down any better than heating up just broke it down. They pretty yeah. much broke through any sort of defense that Big Bunny set up. And, well, I mean, 4-0, 4-0, kind of speaks for itself. It certainly does. And that's how you want to go heading into the MSI, Midseason Invitational, yeah. in case people were confused with uh, computer products and things like that. But, yeah, no, I mean, this is how you <laughs> definitely want to make a statement. And you should beat them. If you beat them, got to feel good. And this is actually that moment where this matchup specifically, I think all the matchups overall between heating up and onslaught and, and any of those that go against each other or against any of the lower teams are going to matter overall in the standings. And well, Didn't when you look at it between three zero six zero four one four two, we grabbed the six zero Richie, yeah. who again made the switch to this team, I believe from onslaught and has been looking really good since then. Three total kills on yeah. the side of big money that game. And well, Richie wasn't one of them. Period. No, you got to watch out for Soldier Bot's Koga too, because this is setting up Richie so well. Because everyone has to pay attention to the Koga. It's kind of like what Slopadopolis's Androxus did. Yeah. The more and more people start utilizing these flanks, and especially these more higher skill cap flanks, because Koga's one thing, Andro's another. I mean, if Soldier Bot gets his Andro going a little bit, this is going to be a team that's super hard to beat. Because you have to give people, if Victors and Vivians and, and these things are so valuable, it's backline, which means you need uh, frontline pressure not always relying it on your front lines to do it. Sometimes you need an aggressive flank who can get in and get out when mastered. And that's what Andro, that's what Koga, that's what Zinn uh, can do. And that's uh, what they are primed uh, to be able to offer up. Well, and that's what they brought overall. I think Heating Up have figured out their dynamic pretty yeah. well. And yeah. because of that, I believe they are still sitting on top. But it's Had only to win. four maps between them and Onslaught. And again, this is probably the, mo the most contentious region for it that is. first place spot. I was actually discussing this earlier where I was talking to Dave about like the teams that need to be worried about MSI and I was like that one fourth of the console league teams, which you take the first from each region. And then I was like, well, maybe maybe you add on one more because right now you don't really know who between heating up and onslaught I think is going to be able to confirm. I think next week they actually go up against each other and depending on who comes out on top then that will more or less decide it unless all of a sudden the next week someone loses 3-0. Well, then it could start tying things up. But and then maps really matter. Maps yep. really matter. And it's not you can't just 3-0 them. No. You have to you have to get another map somewhere else mm -hmm. even if you beat them because then you'll be tied head to head. So there's a lot of pressure. It is not all in the hands of uh Onslaught. Yeah. Uh, heating up, have to make some mistakes for it to happen. They need low-key scheming and big money esports to step up to the plate and try to smack this one out of the park. Although I don't know that's something you can rely on based on what we just <laughs> saw. Either way, we have one more set coming up today. It's going to be Elevate, who we haven't gotten to see in a hot minute, and Cats on Mars, the number one and number two of that region going up against each other. So stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. Brought to you by Skillshot, iRes Studios, Evil Mojo, iNap, Steel Series.